YouTube. John here again with another unboxing video. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm super excited because today we're gonna be unboxing the Cheerson CX20. Now this is gonna be my first uh, GPS quadcopter, my first brushless quadcopter, really my first journey out of the toy grade and into the, the hobby grade. Um, so I'm really excited. And typically when I do an unboxing video, you know, for those who are familiar with my channel, I'll usually do an unboxing, assembly, and then first impression flight. I think I might split this up into two videos. Um, probably do the unboxing and assembly in this video. And then I'll probably cover calibration, because I know there's some calibrations that have to be done with the transmitter and with the quad before you fly. So I'll probably cover calibrations and then my first impressions flight in the second video. Um, I guess it depends on how long this unboxing and assembly goes. Um, so why don't we get right into it and start unboxing this thing. Now while I'm opening this, I do want to say I ordered this from Gearbest uh, from their U.S. warehouse. And I live in Massachusetts. I ordered this on Wednesday around 11 uh, a.m. And this thing hit my doorstep on Saturday at 9 a.m. So super impressed by that shipping speed. So it looks like we have multiple boxes in here. So I think we'll just pull them all out. So we do have quite the pile of boxes here. And I guess what we'll do is we'll start off with the biggest one, which I believe is the quad copper itself. So we'll slide this box over, cut the tape. Down, and we will slide the quadcopter out. There it is. I'm, I'm very impressed with the packaging here. Um, Definitely, I was concerned, you know, sometimes you order these quadcopters and the packages come all smashed. And I, I believe that even if this package was kind of damaged, um, I mean, look at the quadcopter itself. It's got these foam packaging around it. Um, I think it would take a lot to damage one of these in transit. So I'll take this foam off. Wow, there it is. There's the CX-20. Now this is, um, I should say, this is the open source version. Um, so we have some antennas here hanging out on the bottom. Uh, we have battery bay, a really big connector. Now granted, anyone who may be watching, this may be the first video of mine that you're watching, I've only done toy grade quadcopters, so this may not be as impressive to most people, but this is my first hobby grade quadcopter. Um, there's the brushless motors. So, very cool. Put this aside here, and we will open up the uh, transmitter box next. I probably should have cut the tape on all these before I started filming. So here's the transmitter, and it looks like it's packed the same way as the quadcopter. You see the nice foam packaging, so really, it would be really difficult to damage one of these in transit, which is, is good. So I'll peel this aside. And I see we have a warning here. Put this here, pause it and read it if you want to. Uh, but it basically talks about um, calibrating the CX-20 uh, before, fl before flight. Um, so we'll read all that and uh, make sure we do all that before we fly. And like I said, I'll cover that in probably the second video. But let's see, the transmitter feels very nice in the hand. I mean, no surprise, the pots just feel great. Nice spring there. Slightly, it's not ratcheted, but you can feel some detents in the throttle. So that's nice. I see we have um, a one-way switch there, and a three-way switch there, and then a couple of auxiliary channels. And I believe from what I've watched, I'm gonna wind up using, I ordered a gimbal for it, I'm going to use one of these auxiliary channels to control the gimbal to, to tilt it. But very simple transmitter, I'm surprised. Um, but decent weight to it and just feels really nice. Nice lanyard mount on it. Got some trim buttons here, so cool. Let's uh, move over to the small boxes now. What we'll do is we'll slide the boxes forward. Transmitter over there. Quadcopter there. Let's see what we have here. We have a camera support that came with it. 
So we'll open the camera support up. And it's in multiple pieces here. Bear with me. So we have two plates for the base. We have some anti-vibration rubber balls there. And then some screws. And then the camera support, which is basically, you know, the GoPro style uh, camera mount. I said the GoPro camera mount right there. You can see the, looks like you probably see the GoPro one there. But you also have this style mount here, um, which would mount to the quad. So I can mount, you know, you can mount a regular GoPro um, camera in there. So there's the camera mount that comes with it. Um, have a set of props here. And I wish I had read that it only came with one set of props because I would have ordered spares. But anyways, here are the props. Very cool. Good size props there. Here is the landing gear. Open this up. Have some uh, some thumb screws there, so it looks like the landing gear will be easily removable. Again, just really nice packaging. Everything's you know foam wrapped or bubble wrapped. I'm just I'm I'm impressed with how they package this thing. I didn't know what to expect to be honest with you, but I was really concerned about transit and looks like I really didn't have any reason to be. Uh, good size landing gear. Now I've done a lot of research before I got this, and I understand this landing gear may be a little brittle. Um, but we'll start off with it anyways. Have a balance charger. Open this up. And just your standard wall plug. And then there's the charger there. So you have two LEDs on it. Um, looks like a charge indicator and a power indicator. And then there's the plug for the uh, LiPo. And then finally, we have the LiPo itself. So, open this thing up and see what size it is. Looks like it's a uh, three cell LiPo. And it is 2700 milliamp hours. So, decent weight LiPo. So, I think what we'll do now is um, get the LiPo charging and uh, let's get this thing assembled. So I think what we'll do is we'll start with the landing gear and like I said they've given us these nice little uh, thumb screws here. So we'll just simply take the landing gear and line it up right with these pegs right here and then take the thumb screws and just See it there you go just tighten them down that's really nice because that means you won't need any tools if you had to break this down to fit it into a box or a backpack or whoever you however you're gonna carry it you won't need any tools to take the landing gear off to make it fit better so that's that's actually pretty good uh, pretty good thinking there in Cheerson's part so I'll just go ahead and put the other one on here off camera. Don't want to bore you with that. And actually, one thing I do want to show is this landing gear here on the, uh, be the left side of the quadcopter. You can see you have these two antennas sticking out. And the landing gear has, let's see if I get the focus, this notch right here. And this one here. So you need to be careful to make sure that you line the notch up with these antennas and then guide the antennas out of the way of the landing gear because you don't want to pinch it. Um, you don't want to pinch these wires in the landing gear and risk breaking them. So just make sure you pay close attention to that. Now one more thing about the antennas. Um, they wanted you to just use some, some 3M clear tape to hold the antennas on. Um, I decided to go with, with uh, wire ties, real small ones. Unfortunately all I had is yellow, it kind of looks terrible. but. It's holding them on there, and I'll replace them with some white ones or black ones later. But any kind of um, you know clear tape or 
zip ties should work just fine. So the next thing we're gonna have to do is put the props on. And uh, like I said, it only came with one set of props. So just keep that in mind if you're ordering one of these that you're gonna wanna get um, at least one spare set of props. I'm actually gonna order mine once I'm done with this. And if you look at the props, uh, the bottom of them, I don't know if you can tell or not, but they actually have a flat uh, molded into them. And the top of them has an arrow. And this one's showing that it's uh, counterclockwise. So this is going to go on a counterclockwise arm. You can see the arrow right there in the arm. And when you're putting these on, all of the silver headed nuts are standard you know, lefty-loosey, righty-tighty. And then the black nuts are reverse thread. So you're going to spin them clockwise to remove them. So just keep that in mind. And you can see I showed you the flat on the prop. And you can see the flat on the motor. There's one, two. So the flats on the prop need to line up with the flats on that motor. And you can just push the prop down. And then use the supplied get this thing open here sorry guys use the supplied you know spanner wrench here or you can just use a regular old wrench uh, to snug them down so let's try to line this up and it looks like see if they're all molded the same they are they're all molded the same so the flats if you're looking at the prop the flats are actually here so that will help you in aligning them. So this is a counterclockwise prop, counterclockwise arm, flats are there, and it goes right on. And then we'll just tighten this nut down. It's only plastic, so I imagine you don't want to kill it. Tighten that right down. So we got that one on. We'll just repeat for all four corners. And like I said, just remembering that the black nuts are uh, reverse thread. Now before we go into calibration, I just wanted to mention one thing here. Uh, actually two things. Uh, first of all, I, I made a note um, earlier in the video stating that you should put super glue on these prop nuts. This is what I'm using right here, just a super glue gel. Seems to work pretty good. It's a lot more controllable than, than regular super glue. And literally just put a dab right on the thread of the nut and thread it on. Um, it's a lot easier than Loctite to get off, but it will hold it on there. I actually had a prop come loose on me on my third flight and fell off. And luckily it wasn't too high off the ground. All I did was crack a landing gear here. Um, but it could have been a lot worse because I was flying, you know, a good hundred yards up. Not too long before it fell. So definitely if you're going to use the stock props, just put a dab of super glue on there for, for safekeeping. Um, and second, I've added these. Um, you know, you definitely don't need them, but I've seen Mr. Polymers and a couple other guys flying with them. This is just a three quarter inch uh, pipe insulation, and I put some duct tape on there matching the LEDs. We got red in the front, green in the back, just to help with orientation and kind of help pad the landing. It adds a little bit of weight and adds a little bit of. Uh, wind resistance but you know for, for the help it gives me an orientation and a landing uh, I'll give that up for now so I think that about covers everything let's get this thing calibrated